Welcome to Wool and Spinning. My name is Rachel. I can be found pretty much everywhere as well for pearls. I want to welcome you to the show and thank you so much for spending the time, uh, some time with me today. We have a pretty big show. I have some works in progress to share with you. I have a finished object for once. I actually finished something. And I do have a couple of announcements that I wanted to share with you and then we have a, a, a spinning growth. So it's a... Uh, a nicely a nicely packed show sometimes I find there's so much stuff that I can't get through it and then other times I find that there's because I'm not making a lot or I'm not working on any really big projects there isn't a whole lot for me to talk about I feel like I've sort of lost my knitting mojo the last couple of weeks I finished up a pair of socks those cabled socks that I shared on the show and I finished up a commercial yarn sweater that I haven't taken photos of yet and honestly it's just over there on my dress form kind of collecting dust and not really but you know I haven't done anything with it yet I haven't photographed it I haven't mm, I haven't even I've tried it on a couple of times but I haven't like worn it or used it yet and I've kind of just burned out a little bit with my knitting I said to Katrina the other day that I probably should get something on the needles and I probably should start something I decided to start the grow teen by Carolyn Dick it's a fundraiser for North North Aid I don't have any of my stuff here to talk about it, so I'll, I'll mention it next show, hopefully. Um, it's a commercial yarn. I'm just going to write that down, otherwise I'll forget. It's a, the Groteen is a, it's a pattern, but it, there's also a, a knit along that's going on, on on Ravelry for it, and it's a fundraiser. So I can talk about that next show, but if you don't know about it yet, I would definitely go and check out hashtag Groteen, G-R-O-T-I-N-E. And it's Carolyn Dick who is the designer. Long preamble to the beginning of the show is I have kind of lost my knitting no mojo. I'm not really working on anything right now. So that there isn't a whole lot that I've got going on my knitting needles right now. And therefore, there isn't a whole heck of a lot of extra stuff that I'm trying to pack into the show that makes the show really super packed and really super... Sometimes it's hard not to feel really pressured when I have so much to get through and I've got like three pages of show notes, you know, and yeah, it just creates like a, a frenzy around the show and I, I don't like it, but I also want my mojo back. So or my knitting mojo, I have weaving mojo and I have spinning mojo. <laughs> um, welcome Tiff. Uh, so anyways, that's, that's what's going on. I'll work with some of my stashed com commercial yarn and then. Maybe I'll get my hand spun mojo back. You know the problem is I have the, all these like one skein wonders for my hand spun. Do you guys have that problem? I have one skein. Hi, Erica. I have one skein of something. It's not quite enough to do a big project with and I don't know what to do with it. And I've started setting aside like colors into piles and I'm thinking that I might actually weave with a bunch of it on my Jane loom. I'm borrowing an Air, uh, Louette Jane right now. It's a table loom. And I think that I might just do a whole bunch of like colors and then intersperse the warp so that you've got a couple of threads from one color, you know, from one spin and a couple of color, colored warp threads from another spin and just intersperse them all along, kind of like a, not a fade, but you know how you can just blend all of the yarns together and have all of these different, have it all jumbled up and then do something that's one for just the the weft. I'm trying to figure that out because I, I want to get down. My bin is overflowing right now and I like to have one bin of hand spun to work from. And right now my bin is overflowing and I've got like these big vases full of yarn and it's just too much. So anyways. Oh, hi, Sharon. Hi, Elaine. Good to see you guys. Hi, Erica. Hi, Natalie. All right. Welcome, everyone. So now we can like really get into the show and we don't have to have all this preamble of me just babbling at you. <laughs> so yeah, it's hard when you lose your mojo. You know, I think that's one of the things about being a maker and, and making things is you're not going to feel fired up about it all the time. It's just not realistic and it's just part of the journey. So that's definitely where I am right now. Color Storms offers a surprising variety of colors and bright shades made of natural dyes. I offer two kinds of worsted weight yarn that comes in both solids and gradient sets. My fingering yarn is a soft wool nylon blend that comes in gradient sets and multicolored sock sets called Playful Pairs. Last year I started dyeing fiber as well. It's all on my website, 
colorstorms.com. On Instagram, you can see my latest dye work and experiments. All right, let's talk about this down here. I don't think I need to change the cameras around because this is pretty small. So this little bobbin here is from my Lendrum. These are Lendrum bobbins. The Lendrum bobbins are, in my opinion, a little bit small. I kind of like them because it keeps some of the projects that I want to spin, it keeps them a little bit small. I usually have to hand crank at the end if I'm plying a four ounce braid of fiber I usually have to hand crank to fit it all onto the bobbins I know some people have better luck with that than others I I find these bobbins a tiny bit small but the way that the Lendrum is engineered and the way that it's built that's just the way that the bobbins are so this very full skein of your of a uh, bobbin of yarn I'll just put it under here for you guys to see it's it's just I didn't overfill the bobbin but I definitely filled the bobbin so it's it's you know not bulging um, you'll notice sometimes when in the past when I when I was spinning and making stuff I especially with my singles I would just push the bobbin right till its end point so I would the bobbins would always be bulging really badly and I found as I've progressed in my spinning career that I've stopped pushing the bobbins that far I tend to just grab another bobbin this is a massive spin this is several pounds of fiber when all is said and done it's in a big clear grocery bag I think you guys I showed it on the show once and it was like massive we couldn't even see it in the in the screen it was so big and I gave a little bit of it away I think some of it went overseas to I think it went to Finland and this roving here is the fiber itself so I took some of the so what I've been doing is it's it looks like this and it's this beautiful sort of roving prep. And there are some guard hairs in here. I don't think that I mentioned this is Shetland. It's 100% Shetland. It's all different colors of Shetland. I think the majority of the Shetland was, was this gray. But there's definitely some white in there. There's some black in here. Um, there's some guard hairs. There's definitely a lot of stuff in here. There's When you really look really closely at it, there's actually some light brownie tan kind of colors so what I've been doing is for my spin that I did for the sparkle cardigan and that was the one that was the Romney mohair blend I took all of these rovings and I split them in half so that two pounds of wool that I spun for that project I split all of the rovings in half but for this one I decided not to do that and instead I have just been pre-drafting it with a little bit of a twist to keep it together and just working my way down the fiber like that. All the way, all the way. And then I end up with this pre-drafted fiber. It's very light. It's very airy. You can see how it differs because you can see how, how it differs from the density of this. They look different, right? This one's lighter, there's more air in there, there's more light getting through. This one is still much denser. It looks darker gray. In, to my, to, in my light, this looks like a, like a gray brown. I think to you it probably looks quite gray. But you can see how dense it is compared to the pre-drafted fiber. And I've been going along the whole length of these and I've just been taking them off like I kind of wind it around my hand and when my hand gets full then I just break it and walk away from the big bump that's sitting upstairs in my in our master bedroom and then I pre-draft this whole thing and when I'm when I've pre-drafted it I start spinning and when I was first sitting down at the wheel and I was sampling this I found that it was if I spun it true worsted, which this isn't a worsted prep, it's a, it's roving, so it's it's a woolen prep, but it could be spun worsted if you sat there and did short forward draw. So it's not true worsted, but if you spun it worsted short forward, I was finding that the singles was very, very dense 
and they they didn't the the lightness and the airiness and the loft of the roving was lost as I was spinning because the the singles were getting thicker for one because I was finding the twist was really running away from me so I dropped the the ratio down quite low but then the more I did that the more I found that it was under twisted and then you're still spinning worsted and you've got all this twist building up it just was a hot mess the fibers in this are quite they're not they're not super super they're sort of what I would call like a like a medium just sort of like that that's the staple of the fiber so that's a bobbin for scale so they're quite long so I defaulted to my favorite draft, which is short backward, but instead of smoothing as I went, I would pinch, pull back, just moving my hand so you can see, pinch, pull back, and then instead of smoothing, I would just take my hands off, pinch, pull back, and so on. So in between, the singles remained light and lofty and airy, and they almost kind of, when, it, when you do a plyback test, they almost sort of look like a woolen spun yarn. So my choice now, because this is very, very fine spun, if I two ply it, it'll make a lace weight. And if I three ply it, it'll make a fingering weight. So now I'm trying to decide, do I want to spin all of the bag and have a bajillion yards of two ply? Or do I want to three ply it and only have like a million yards? <laughs> My plan, and this is actually what I was getting to, is to weave a, a blank, not a blanket, but to weave a piece of fabric with this. So this is something that I'm going to save the yarn until I have a loom wide enough that I can weave a fairly wide piece of fabric. So I'm going to do some sampling on the Jane, get an idea of what I want to do for my set, and that's how many... Uh, threads there are per inch in both your warp going this way and your weft going this way. So you do some sampling and set it on the loom and sort of see, I'd like to come off with like maybe three samples where it's a little bit looser, maybe medium and then a little bit tighter to sort of have that comparison of what that fabric might look like. Uh, and then I can decide what I want to do from there. But the plan right now is to weave quite a big piece of fabric. I'm just catching up with chat. I just want to make sure I haven't missed anything. All right, you guys are just chatting. So the next thing that I finished was uh, the Crafty Jacks Fiber Club for April. This was a really fun spin. You know, I'm really, I don't know if you guys have heard, but Katrina is going to be finished. She's not going to be running Fiber Club past June. So it's April now. We're recording this on April 15th of 2019. And as of June, there won't be any more Fiber Club. So I think June is going to be the last month. And it's I, I'm bummed that she's not going to be continuing on with it. I know what some of the stuff that's in the pipeline and part of the reason why they're making that decision. So I'm really excited for her around that. But I really enjoyed this month's spin. And I think part of it was because it was just so simple. You know, it was the four nests of fiber. If you saw my Instagram, you saw me post what this looked like. I think I showed it on last last episode. This is uh, UK organic. Oh, where's my, my bag with the notes in it? Of course, I can't find it. I said to my husband this morning, I don't know, do you guys experience this? We were, we had the house was like really clean. It was really organized. I knew where everything was. We were doing really, really well. And then for some reason over the last like week or so, it's gotten really cluttered again. And I don't really know why, because I've been trying to maintain it, <laughs> but now it's like cluttered again. But I think it's because I have like Fibers West stuff down here from the book. And I've got all that yarn that I showed you last episode that I need to divide up into the smaller skeins to get Katrina to dye. And I've got giveaway fiber back here for you guys for May. And it just kind of has ended up like the whole, but the whole house is like this. It's causing me anxiety. Um, <laughs> and so um, this was UK organic. I think it was sorry silk. Let me just take a sec and see if I can find it. Cause I know it's like right here and it is. So this was UK organic llama sorry silk. 
Oh, and Tessa Silk, not sorry, Silk. Sorry, that was my fault. So UK Organic, Llama, Tessa Silk, and she gave me 53 grams. So um, that was that. This, like I said, this was just really fun to spin. So there was all these nests. I got four nests. I took two, two of the four and I spun to one bobbin and then I took two of the other, the, the remaining two and I spun them to the other bobbin. I spun to, did I spin on my Lendrum I think? I don't even remember now. I feel like I spun on my Lendrum. I've been using my Lendrum a lot recently. I'm not really sure why. Like this big spin I'm doing on my Lendrum and I don't know why I didn't do it on my Magicraft. I just, I just didn't. I think the Lendrum is a little, it's slower and I can't treadle as quickly and I'm using a ratio of 15 to one for this one. And I just, have just been enjoying like the, the slowness of it, I guess, is for lack of a better way of describing it. And so with this, I'm pretty sure I did this on my Lendrum as well. I think I applied it on my Magicraft. Anyhow, I took all of those nests and I divided them. I stripped them this way, just like this, lengthwise, and I pre-drafted them. And I actually stripped them so that I had three strips of fiber and I pre-drafted all of it. And I just spun end to end. And I, again, I used a short backward. I didn't smooth. I just drafted back. I kept the single sort of roughly what would give me a sport weight yarn when I was finished, which is what happened. I didn't worry about fiber as I got fiber. Like there's parts where there's only Tessa Silk and there's parts where there's only one color and there, you know, it didn't color blend and color twist and do all that kind of stuff. Like there's this lovely heathering in here, but then there's other sections that are completely solid. I don't know. I just was really enjoying the the process and just keeping it sort of as um organic quote unquote as possible i'll just uh, i zoomed in for you but then i messed up the yarn so let me just um reorganize it so you can really see the fibers i don't want to move the cameras around because obs keeps uh, crashing and um i am a little bit concerned about that um somebody is asking in the Slack channel about fiber for breed and color study. It, the link is still live. So if you go, Margaret, if you go to the to the link, maybe Becca or Eve or somebody could pop in and just um, give her the links because she's at work. Um, oh, thank you, Becca. You're already on it. See, you guys are so good. Today is a really big day. So this spin was wonderful. It was lovely. I'm gonna leave it here. It was very simple. It was a sport weight, and then we're gonna go. We're gonna get into the announcements because today has been a very big day. <laughs> so let me leave that there just for us to look at pretty stuff. And um, we're going to talk about some of the announcements because I don't have a lot to say about this spin. One thing that I am going to do is this fiber was very similar in color to my, a couple of other spins that I've done that some of them are Felicia's, or Felicia, some of them are Katrina's fiber. Some of them are, was stuff that I spun from elsewhere. I've got this gain is going to go into that bin. I've got like this pile of these colors that are all very similar. These are definitely going to be a warp. So I have plans for this. I plied it more tightly so that I could throw it on the loom. And I'm actually really looking forward to seeing what this looks like woven because it's just really pretty. It's, it's sort of a semi-solid. It's very analogous. There's no extraneous colors in it. It's just really lovely. I didn't have to think about it. Diane just said, sometimes you just need a spin. You don't need to overthink. It's so true. I very much needed that. Last week was absolutely nutty. Uh, Friday was insane in four years of preschool. So James went to preschool for two years, for a couple times a week, for a couple hours. And then Nora went to preschool for the same in the same program, same school. In four years, I have never not been able to get to the kids' school for pickup, ever. Four years. Friday, I couldn't get there. Like, no matter what I did, I would not be able to get there. There was a massive accident on the highway, and it's amazing how stressful that is. So that kind of, like, it was like the finish to the week. It was Friday afternoon, and I just thought, okay, all right, okay, universe. <laughs> <laughs> I wave the white flag. I need to slow down. I get it. <laughs> so yeah, this spin very much 
was was a nice a nice way to end um, end the week. I have too much other stuff to think about lately. Yes, I hear you, Kelly. Oh my goodness, I think a lot of us like there's just an inherent amount of stress in our age and stage of life you know whether you're you know in my age group or or you know a, a little bit further ahead in life or a little bit further or a little bit behind like you know all these different stages of life like there, there's just an inherent amount of stress the girls at work were talking yesterday and it wasn't a super busy day at work and it was really interesting because i i don't tend to say too much at work i i i only work on the weekends and i i know how uh blessed i am to be able to be home monday to friday with the kids and Mike and I have made a lot of changes so that we can do that. And so I, you know, I tend to sort of just step back when people are talking about the cost of living in, in Vancouver. And it was really interesting because there was a group of them that were talking yesterday and they were talking about our gas prices because our gas is up to um, $1.77 Canadian. And they, so they were talking about, about our gas prices. They were talking about our, our housing taxes and they were talking about our cost of living and they were talking about like, you know, the cost of housing and groceries and it just went on and on. And I was sitting there and I was thinking, you know, I don't think it matters if you're, you know, brand new out of school or if you're, um, you know, at the end of your career and looking at retirement or somewhere in between or somewhere further on, it's just stressful. <laughs> like it's just stressful. You know, and, and financially living here is very expensive. And I don't usually get into that kind of stuff on the podcast. But uh, it was a very interesting conversation to sit there and listen to what these um, what these girls were saying. Because it was a range of age groups. It was a couple of girls who've just come out of school. A couple of guys who are doing their PhD and are doing what I'm doing, working on weekends. And then a couple of moms who are friends with, with me, but they're a good 15 years older than me. And so it was just really interesting to hear their conversations. <laughs> Kelly says, holy crap, $1.77 here. I am complaining about $1.16. Yeah, I wish we had $1.16. When I first got my car, when I was um, 17, our gas prices were, uh, it was like between 50 and 60 cents. And my dad was, and that, you know, it was 20, 20 years ago. And my dad, I remember him saying, I, the, I've never seen these gas prices. They're so high. And I'm thinking, oh, but I can fill up for like 20 bucks. It's okay. <laughs> Now, oh my goodness, I don't know how people afford it. All right. Um, okay, e, uh, I have two announcements, and so let's do that next. I'm going to move the cameras around. Let's cross our fingers that um, things don't crash. Breeding color studies went live this morning. I talked to Katrina about an hour ago, and as far as I know, um, there is still a little bit of product left. So if you are watching the live stream right now and you would still like to participate, the links are in the Patreon post. She has created a separate um, discount code stuff for you guys. So uh, just check in with her or me. Um, and yeah, this was Breeding Color Studies and it went live this morning. I'm very distracted right now because the, <laughs> the, uh, the chat is now blowing up about gas prices. So um, the thing is, is that in Canada, BC's gas prices are, the, are some of the highest other than the Maritimes. But then Eve chimed in about the UK and like you can't even compare the UK or Europe's fuel prices to North America because they're so much higher. So um, it's almost not fair. <laughs> so anyways, in Canada, we pay, in this part of Canada, we pay a ton, but I know that compared to Europe, we don't pay as much. Um, our gas is, is heavily taxed, but I know that so is yours. Um, when we when my dad was in Britain, actually in February, uh, he he um, uh, he rented a car because he's from there, and he he wanted to see some specific. He was there to see family, and he made a comment about how much more it is even just from a year or two ago from from being in in England. So I know that European gas prices are even higher. Um. Yeah, so Breeding Color Study uh, went live this morning. If you're a patron of the show, there was um, an extra post for you to see. So if you would still like to participate and you missed it or you were in a different time zone and you were just mixed up or you um, forgot that it was today, go on over um, and I think there's still some product left. According to Katrina, when I talked to her, um, like I said, an hour ago, there was still stuff available. So I uh, we... we sort of think some of the changes that we made, it probably sort of worked out in terms of um, uh, supply and demand. So hopefully that 
went a lot better for you guys and um, you know we always appreciate your feedback and your comments and whatnot and you can comment um, on the patreon posts the one that went out for everybody that was public that was for everyone who wanted to participate and then for those who um, were patrons of the show there was an extra post for you and I've already started the threads in Ravelry so if you start spinning start sharing your photos in the chatter thread I will say it's so funny I, cause I get the fiber before you guys, cause I usually get Katrina's like test fiber. So then she passes it along to me. And then, um, obviously I, um, um, pay her for it. And I usually just start spinning right away. Like I just like, I delve in right away and I take a lot of photos and I share with you guys on the podcast a little bit, but of course a lot of it's for the, how I spin content. And it's really interesting because this time round, I didn't start spinning and I haven't even opened it other than to take these photos. And so I'm really curious for those of you who, as you receive your fiber and start jumping on the bandwagon to start spinning, what you guys do, because I'm kind of where you are this time. I haven't started. If you would like to participate in this spin along and you d decided not to purchase the fiber from Katrina, that's totally fine. Please join in anyhow. If you've got some Dorset in your stash, something that you want to use up, if you want to you know, get some locally to you, whatever the, the case may be. Uh, this, this spin along is open to everybody and it runs from April 1st. So it's already started all the way through until the end of September. And it's just a chance to learn about Dorset, learn about spinning Dorset. This time around, we're doing a true woolen prep with a fiber that lends itself really beautifully to true woolen spinning. And the nice thing is next month in May, we're, that's what our 51 yarns, one of our 51 yarns that we're looking at for us for that spin along. That's this, this spin along that we're doing it from this book from by JC Box Faulkner is true woolen. That's one of the two yarns. So if you want to use that for your May yarn, that might be a really good, um, a really good idea. So just planting that seed there, because I have to admit, I did think about double dipping. I, in the end, I decided not to, but I, um, I was looking for a head and sort of saw that the true woolen was coming up and this is a true woolen prep and it's a, you know, a, a true, a fiber that lends itself to woolen spinning. So just something to think about. Um, I've never spun worsted. Any tips for a first go? Oh, Kelly, do you mind? Wool do you mean woolen? You've never spun woolen. Um, we, I will post in the show notes. I'm going to write it down so that I don't forget. Um, the link to my YouTube video that is an intro to getting started with spinning long draw. Um, so I tend to teach people to, by starting with short backward. And as you become more, more confident with your short backward, your pinching hand is out here and you're doing short backward, right? So you're doing this motion. So what I tend to do is once you're comfortable with that, I figured Kelly, she said, I mean, woolen, um, I pinch draw back, but then instead of then sliding my hands back or letting go and coming back here to pinch, I will keep my finger up here unpinch, let the twist run up, pinch again, draw back, and then open my fingers, let the twist run up, pinch, draw back. And so I start with short backward. And once you're comfortable with that, you migrate toward more of a woolen long draw. Um, and I will post that link so that you guys have access to that for those who would like to try woolen spinning with this. I love that I keep saying the title of the podcast. <laughs> It keeps throwing me off. I'm like, wait a sec. Am I talking about the right thing? <laughs> um, you can tell I feel very distracted today. And it's just because of the Breed and Color Studies going live this morning. A crazy weekend. Friday, like I said, was crazy. And then the ebook went live this morning. So I am so pleased to announce that the ebook went live this morning. So the links are going to be posted below. This is the title. This is the cover. Have I shown you guys this before? It's a big poster. So this is the cover of the book. The ebook went live this morning. So we've taken all the pre-orders for the book. They are literally being shipped as we speak. Katrina and I will get together as soon as they arrive to sign the pre-ordered copies and we will throw those in the mail for you ASAP. In the meantime, the ebooks are available and the links will be down below. Eve, if you want to go to the Patreon post that is with this live stream, it is in the show notes below. 
so you guys can have access to that. And the ebook is like Kindle, iBooks, all of that compatible. So you guys will be able to load it in your online ebook library and you will be able to read away. And I, you know, it's funny. So I have to tell you, this show is, this episode is light on um, projects because I haven't really been working on stuff, like, like I said earlier in the show. And um, the other night, Katrina and Eric and I were on the, on the phone and we decided to use our landline. And yes, there will be a discount for anybody who wants both. Uh, Eve, just, you just need to get in touch with Katrina. And um, I think you need to go to the website. That's, that's what you need to do, Eve. And um, <laughs> so we're on the phone and we're on the landline. It's quite late at night and we we're doing final edits on the book before we sent it off to uh, get it, um, to, to order it. I'm just gonna change the cameras around. Actually, no, I'm going to go to spinning growth because we're going to talk about that next. And um, <laughs> we were talking about all the all this different stuff that we need to talk to about the book. And we, we sort of finished and we got to the end of it all. And the three of us, there was sort of this moment of silence as we're like finishing up and Eric was making a couple of changes. And there was like this sort of sense of calm that sort of I felt come over me. There was like... I'm just really happy with how it all came out and how the book reads and how it came out and the changes that we made. And I, yeah, it was just a really great, a, a really great end to all of the editing that we ended up doing for the book. So I'm really proud of sort of how it all ended up. Um, yeah, so the eBooks are available today. Links are down below. For those who would like both the eBook and the hard copy there is a link on Katrina's website I will link that down below as well all right let's talk about spinning growth this is from Marion and I'm sorry that that one photo is a little bit cut off but we'll move it around as we're talking about it because I can do that uh it this was post 80 of spinning growth and Marion who's also Myri Mari says I have to read this off of my cat off of the uh, monitor because I don't know why but my my printer wouldn't print it see how it's all like yeah I don't know what was going on. So anyhow, we're gonna read it off the monitor. I don't like reading it off the monitor because I have to move everything around, but them's the breaks. All right. Sorry, I'm just making sure I haven't missed anything before we move on to spinning growth. I just wanna make sure I haven't missed anything in the chat because there's a lot, of, um, a lot of conversation going on and sometimes when I'm doing the show, it's hard to keep up with just everything that's going on. Um, okay, so you guys are still talking about the woolen yarns. I just reread the description JC gives of true woolen spun yarns, and she does state it needs to be from hand carded prep. Yes, that's true. The breed and color study, it is drum carded, you're right. So I guess it's not true, true woolen, but for those who don't own hand cards, it's a great opportunity. And for those who bought the kits, and have hand cards and we're planning on carding some of this stuff up, then you can spin true woolen. Um, short forward drafts gives me, drives me crazy and I almost never do it. It's funny how different drafts just work differently for different people. Okay, it's so funny, Becca, that you would say that because I hate short forward and I rarely use it and I only use it when I have to. And I think part of it is that because I don't tend to put my uptake on my wheel very high, I'm not one of those people that likes a really super firm uptake. I find that the short forward, it, it, I have to put the uptake up to get the fiber to move forward and I end up defaulting back to a short backward. So as soon as I put my uptake a bit firmer, then it works a bit better for me, but then I feel like there's like this tension on the yarn that I don't like as much as I like what it feels like when I'm spinning short backward. But my short backward yarns are never going to be as consistent as my short forward, but I find that I can spin finer short backward now because I have practiced that draft so much, if that makes sense. So it's really interesting. Everybody spins differently and everybody defaults into their, their favorite, their favorite drafts. Uh, me too. I had to force myself to relearn to teach it, it's funny because three out of nine of the class automatically gravitate towards short backwards. That's so funny, hey? I found that when I was teaching a lot as well, people tended to default into short backward without even meaning to. 
I know what JC means and I know what hand combed. I know that hand comb prep is part of true worsted, but I'm not going to be buying combs anytime soon, so I'm not going to sweat it. Yeah, that's so true, hey? Like, you need combs. You need, for, for true woolen, you need cards for true worsted, or sorry, true woolen. You know, some people want to get drum carters, so they're saving up for bigger pieces of equipment. Some people want hackles, so they're saving for that. Like, it's a lot of stuff. It's funny that we would be talking about this, because last week I was... Part of the conversation that's been going on behind the scenes here it, between my husband and I is sort of what my long-term plans are. And I one of, the, one of my goals for the next couple of years is to get a loom. And I have some other goals that aren't acquiring things, but that is sort of one of my primary goals. And it's because I want to make specific pieces of fabric. And... Um, I started to feel quite like stressed about it. It was kind of funny. Like it was sort of this, like anxiety that was building up in me that like I need this loom and I don't need this loom. I've got the Jane loom. It's working beautifully. I'm going to put some tea towels on it next and I'm going to borrow an artisat from my friend Kelsey because she's not using it. She doesn't have space for it and she offered it to me. So I'm just going to borrow it and just keep it so that it's working and not just being stored. And it sort of made me realize like, you know, <sighs> there's always something, you know, you're always wanting something, coveting something, you're always on to the next thing. And getting rid of some of my extra spinning wheels that I had that I wasn't using a ton and uh, selling some of my equipment that I that I have, I just don't use some of my stuff. And so I've been slowly just purging it and letting some of that go. And I didn't buy anything at Fibers West. I got a couple of things for you guys and then the yarn that uh, I wanted to help Lynn to get the word out about. And other than that, like I, I didn't buy anything. And you know, it, it, I've been really trying to sort of figure out what it is that will uh, help me to, to find that contentment and that, uh, it not not just the contentment but the the enjoyment in in my making and it's not acquiring more stuff you know getting combs just so that you can spin the true woolen or the true worsted yarn is not going to make you happy <laughs> and um it's a tough it's a it's a tough thing to sort of rem remember and to to check in with yourself about our studies are our own which is the great thing about studying for ourselves so true erica and um all right I think I'm, I think we're caught up with the chat and then you guys now know all of the things that have been going on in my mind for the last week or so. And I've been chatting with a lot of you on the Slack channel about about weaving and looms and whatnot and and I think um, the more I learn the more I, I actually know what kind of loom that I would like to get and um, I'm excited for the day for that day that eventually will come in the future when I can do that but it's not right now. And I always say to the kids when they see something in the store that they want, and I, I know that we're not going to buy it, I always say, yep, yeah, one day, one day, maybe someday. And um, they're totally happy with that. So they'll say to me sometimes, oh, can we get, you know, whatever it is, uh, one day, <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe we can. <laughs> so I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm feeling that way about the loom. It's like, yep, yeah, one day, and, and I'm okay with that. All right, let's talk about spinning growth. It is a sense of true satisfaction. You're right, Diane. Okay, so Marion says in Spinning Growth, you guys have been watching the photos as I've been babbling at you. So here is a skein of yarn I made a few days ago. It is a two-ply combining Gotland lamb's wool and hand-dyed silk hankies. The silk hankies were a leftover from another project and the Gotland locks were hand-combed. While spinning and plying, the Gotland behaved quite like any other longer wool fiber I have been working with, but after soaking and drying the final yarn, it seems that the Gotland has relaxed or stretched or the silk has shortened, question mark. And in many places, the original curls seem to break free from the yarn, if that makes sense. And the amount of twist lost in the finishing process is way above average. I have plied the, the few remaining meters of Gotland with itself and this yarn, sorry, no photo as it has already been used. And the yarn does not behave like that. No escaping curls or, and no extraordinary reduction of twist. So I really wonder why the Gotland silk yarn looks the way it does. I had a similar effect in my first samples of Cotswold lamb fleece, but at that time I thought this might be the result of spinning from the merely flicked locks instead of properly combing them. 
The combed fiber resulted in a far more even yarn and I had no problem with the curls coming back after washing. So I thought combing the fiber was the solution. Now this skein seems to prove the opposite. I like the skein I made though. It does not, though it did not turn out as planned. It is nice and soft and in fact it almost looks like a kind of boucle. I was going to say that when I first looked at the yarn. I was like, oh it kind of looks like a boucle. Nevertheless, I would like to understand what makes the fiber behave like this and how I can control it without turning the yarn into rope. Okay, so I'm just going to reiterate some of her thoughts because it's a, a lot of information that she gave and it's really thorough, which is really helpful. Uh, but basically she says, while combing, while spinning and plying the gauntlet, while spinning and plying, the gauntlet behaved like any other long wool fiber I have been working with. But after soaking and drying the finished yarn, it seems that the gauntlet has relaxed or stretched, or maybe the silk has shortened. And it may be, and in many places, the original curls seem to break free from the yarn. And the amount of twist lost in the finishing process is way above average. So there's a really great photo here, and hopefully we don't lose it as I move things around quickly, but you see in that, that previous photo, and now we've gone to the next photo, there almost seems to be places in the yarn where there is no twist at all, and it's very under spun. Um, it would be interesting to hang this yarn and see if as the skein hangs, if it, if it rolls outward on itself, which shows an underspun yarn, because this certainly isn't gonna be a yarn that's gonna twist on itself and be overspun after finishing because if you if i mean you can see the two singles almost sort of lay next to each other and the twist angle is is incredibly flat right i mean i think the twist angle is probably 10 degrees if that so i would like to hear from the more experienced spinners out there what they think because there were quite a few people in the in the ravelry group and in the ravelry channel of this um thread who said they thought that the silk probably shortened in the finishing process the only thing that i wonder about that is that if the silk really truly shortened and nothing else in the finished skein changed it doesn't account for the changes that we see in the gauntlet and it doesn't account necessarily for that really, really super, super relaxed twist angle. So it makes me wonder, number one, if the yarn wasn't as plied as very tightly, if it was plied very, very loosely and how the gauntlet was spun in the first place. So was the gauntlet underspun? Was it overspun? Gotland, when we when we did our breeding color study with Gotland, a lot of people really struggled with the Gotland because as soon as you go to wash it, it just curls right back up on itself. And because it's the, a long wool and it's got these long, lustrous locks, all those tips start to try to break free and they become sort of activated again. And I can't remember who it was in the Slack channel that talked a lot about how at that time, how those curls act in the finished yarn and in the finished products and whatnot. And I know Deb Robeson has talked a lot about how if you make a garment, for example, with a long wool, you may want to think about cutting the tips off because it's the tips that cause the scratching and the itching because they're constantly poking out. And so if you cut them, they won't be as prickly and they won't be as itchy and that allergy to, to, to wool that people talk about, quote unquote, is often that itchiness and that scratching that you get from the tips of the wool fibers. So I wonder. The other thing that I was wondering about, because I've never made a yarn like this, so I was wondering if there was anybody in the group who had. The other thing that I was wondering was, the gauntlet can spin up very wiry and it can create a very wiry yarn when it's spun true wor worsted and if there's too much twist added to it. So the more twist you add to it, the more ropey and the more wiry it becomes. So if you're trying to combat that and you end up not putting enough twist in, especially in this yarn, like you can see right here in the, um, 
in this particular photo even. You see how it lifts up and away and again it's that activation when it got wet of those curly locks. In some ways if you had held the silk taut and done a spiral ply of the gauntland all the way along and then had another a, a third singles but a second single of the silk and plied it over to like cabled it over top to make a boucle yarn this would have been amazing because there's nothing to lock that gotland in place right because this is a two ply yarn but if you if there was that one step further taken where the the twist had been tightened up on this skein and then cabled to make the boucle I mean it just would have been amazing because then all of those loops and all of those um, places where you see those Gotland curls trying to break free from the silk and trying to this this picture is the best because you see how there's that one little place right in the middle of the photo where you can really see that loop um, that silk single plied on top okay, boucle on top would have br brought that aspect of the yarn out even more even if that wasn't what you were intending to create in the first place it's a very interesting yarn I love yellow and gray together so purely from like a color perspective I just love it but it's very very interesting what are some of the other things I said I would love to be able to see this yarn in person it looks like the two plies would slide right past each other that's what I think it's almost like they kind of slide past each other and they didn't really ply together and so they're almost trying to balance themselves. Um, so yeah, so in my notes I talked about Gotland reactivating its twist when it went for its bath. So the curly locks became just that again, curly and separate from the yarn. Um, I wondered if the silk had shortened after soaking. We can talk about that in another show. Uh, I wonder what this yarn would have been like with a slightly different plying technique. So that so I mentioned about the boucleing or the spiral plying. Um, the other thing I was wondering was a slightly thicker Gotland single. So one of the things in our breeding color study way back when, when we explored this yarn was people really found it very difficult with their Gotland, the thinner it was spun, the more difficult it was to manage it for some people. And it just, it was because it just became so active once it was washed and plied and people found that spinning it ever so slightly thicker, you could still spin it for a lace weight, but just a wee bit thicker to give it a little bit more mass and density they found it was a little bit easier to manage whether that is the case and it just is a you know a, an experience thing I don't know I think mine ended up coming out to be like a heavy heavy fingering or a light fingering or something and it's a very dense yarn I haven't used it yet it's in my stash upstairs um yeah, and then I said there's a lot of possibilities with the, this yarn. I would encourage sampling with it. Woven or knit fabric will be completely different and will make this yarn, it will cause this yarn to act completely differently than it does in this game. I like too that she said that she likes it. Um, you know, so she, it was completely unexpected, but then she says, I like the skein I made, though it did not turn out as planned. It is nice and it's soft, and in fact, it almost looks like a kind of boucle. Um, nonetheless, I would like to understand what makes the fiber behave like this and how I can control it without turning the yarn into rope. Yeah, so I would love to hear from the community because this yarn really stumped me and I did do some reading and I looked some stuff up, but I would really like to hear from, from people in the community if you've had this happen before to you, if there's something in the characteristics of the silk or the gotland that we haven't talked about if you could throw that in the comments below or on the post on patreon or on the blog and uh, I can come back to this yarn if we if we get enough responses and I'll share them with you because I think that's how we learn and that's how we grow together um, these aren't two fibers that I would have put together and so I'm really interested to know from others what has worked in the past putting these fibers together and what hasn't worked in the past or maybe you put a different long wool with silk and it did or did not work so please chime in in the conversation below so one ply has quote unquote life and one is quote unquote static did the gotland just bloom around the silk well that's what i wonder diane actually yeah i mean that's part of part of what I, what i wonder you know silk doesn't have that same um, bounce and elasticity that wool does so it's certainly going to act differently and that's, uh, yeah. So I think we should explore that some more in future episodes. 
This month's sponsor of the show is Colorstorms, colorstorms.com, which you saw earlier in the show. I hope that you'll check out Linda's site. Um, like I said, we've started Breed and Color Study, so hop into the Ravelry group to participate. April's giveaway is um, sponsored by Lynn Anderson of West Coast Color. Hop into the Ravelry group and tell us what your, tell us about a breed specific yarn or fiber from a farm. Oh no, you know what? We changed it. I changed it. Um, yeah, because we I changed the giveaway prompt. So on the post, I'll change it for when the show goes live later today. But on the uh, post, I think I said, um, I think the notes will say, uh, tell us about a breed specific yarn. What we're actually doing this month is to share your favorite hand spun knitting pattern or weaving draft or, or a weaving draft that works really well to showcase hand spun yarn. That's what we are doing. And I will take the patterns that haven't been added to our pattern bundle in the Ravelry group. I'll take the ones that haven't been added yet and I'll, I'll add them later in the spring. This month's 51 yarns spin along. So we talked about our 51 yarns spin along earlier in the show. Um, but this month we're looking at the second part of our double coated study. And you guys have been chatting a ton in the Ravelry group, which makes my heart sing. So thank you for, for that. And um, I also talked about in the monthly vlog, the teaching content that goes with uh, patronage for wool and spinning. I talked about double coated wools in one vlog and then there's a second vlog this month and I talked about uh, Fibers West. So spinning at, so I, I ticked off if you will, yarn number 48 which was spinning at a retreat. Some of those yarns that are part of the community yarns, they don't really fit anywhere specifically. Like I, you can't really say, okay, on this, in this month of this year, I'm going to do this yarn. So I'm fitting them in where they fit in my, um, in my study. And you guys can do the same. You don't have to do that particular yarn this month. If it doesn't fit for you, save that one and do it when it fits. Um, yeah, there's the newsletter for Woolen Spinning, so please uh, don't forget to check that out and to subscribe. That's for everybody. And if you would like to support the show, if you're a small business owner or a small fiber producer or farmer, anything, um, you can get in touch with me. There's links down below. Um, before I sign off, I'm going to turn my cameras around really quickly. I just wanted to ask if you guys had any questions about anything. Um, it's a shorter show this week, although we, I... The stream's been going for an hour, so, you know. Um, but if you guys had any questions around the Breed and Color Studies or if you had any questions around the book, um, I thought that I would sort of spend a couple of minutes answering anything that you guys were wondering about in because I know there's been a lot of posts, there's been a lot of discussion on the podcast, there's been a lot of discussion on Wool and Spinning Radio, which is the secret podcast associated with Wool and Spinning um, and the Patreon I just wanted to make sure that you guys are sort of clear as mud on everything that's going on because crazy everything went live today. So the pre-orders for the book are sort of done and we're just waiting for the shipment and we'll get those out as quickly as possible. And then if you miss the pre-orders, you can still order through the website um, craftyjacks.ca and that's J-A-K-S dot C-A. And um, yeah, I just wanted to spend a minute if you guys had any questions, um, answering any questions just because there's been a lot going on and I've tried to hop on as much as possible to answer them. If we ordered the book and the fiber, can they be shipped together? I'm sure that they can. Um, that's a question for Katrina. So I will um, mention that to her. I'm writing it down so I don't forget. I know that for many of you that will save on shipping costs for sure. It's very expensive to ship within Canada, but I know it's also very expensive to ship Canada to the US. So excited for my book. Still think we should have a live book signing. <laughs> so Eve, you have to talk Katrina into that. I'm so used to doing the live streams now, it doesn't bother me, but I'm not sure that Katrina will go for it. <laughs> um, yeah. If you had one hour to do whatever you want, what would you work on? Oh, that's a good question, Diane. If I had one hour to work on whatever I wanted to do, what would I work on? Like right right now, what would I work on? Or like in general? Because I, I think my answer would be twofold. If I had an hour right this second to work on something I wanted to do, 
then I would finish the weaving that's on my loom right now. So I would go and finish that off and get it, get it completely off the loom and like completely finished. Uh, but if I had an hour, like more in general terms to do something with, I think probably I would choose spinning. If I, whenever I have an hour of undevoted time that I can carve out for myself, I usually go and spin because I want to um, work on a really big project. So if I have an hour to get into a project and sort of shut off my brain, if you will, then I want to spend that hour spinning. If you had to knit or weave for the rest of your life, which would it be? Ooh, that's a good question, Eve. Mm, I know you've already started on Katrina. She mentioned it to me the other night. Um, if I could only knit or weave for the rest of your life, which would it be? I, I actually think it's a fair question. Diane said, ah, don't, don't make us choose. But in some ways, like, yes, they're very different, but I find weaving more interesting from a technical perspective. Um, I think that's why I've slowly navigated toward it because while knitting is incredibly portable, so are spindles. So as long as I could still spin, um, I would have my spindles for portability and then I could spin all of my warp, all of my weft. I would weave. I know that's like heresy for the knitters out there, but I, I think I would weave. And I think it's because intellectually weaving holds my attention more than knitting does. I find knitting is very much a product thing for me now. Even though I love knitting and I can't imagine ever not knitting, um, it's very product driven for me now. Whereas weaving is very much about the process and figuring out the math and figuring out what will work and what won't work. And so from like a technical perspective, I find weaving more interesting. Uh, and I've always found it more interesting. So I think I would choose weaving. That's a tough one because it's not portable unless you get into like frame loom weaving and like the little like tapestry looms, the little frame looms that are really popular right now, which I can't really see myself doing much of. That's a good question. You guys have good questions. <laughs> we should do this more often. So um, these are, uh, there was a, um, a uh, podcast that I was following that I was following for a while and they, they they've gone off the air they don't do their thing anymore but they had these evening um, they didn't call them beat em ups that's a another tech podcast they call them beat em ups but they have like rapid fire questions so for their patreon community they have um, these live streams just like this and they just fire questions at them and um, uh, yeah it it uh, it's really kind of cool because then um, the person being the questions being fired at I can fire them back at you guys as well and get you guys to answer them and then it becomes a blog post later so it's kind of cool uh, sometimes I give myself a get out of jail free card and spent set the timer for one hour and just do what I want that's a great idea Diane I like that um, I love the technical stuff I'm learning with weaving that's really doing it for me right now I agree Kelly I'm definitely really in in that um, in that place right now as well. I'm I, I'm finding the technicalities of weaving to be absolutely fascinating uh, in a way that knitting never ha captured me in that way. So it's just very different. So yeah, if you guys have any more questions, pop them in, out now and then I will say goodbye because I need to edit the show. And then I need to go get Nora at preschool because this will not be a day that I cannot get there. <laughs> I still can't believe I couldn't get there on Friday. So there was, we had to pick up my husband at work. That's why I was, why I was out in the valley was because I had to um, meet him and then we dropped one of our vehicles off for servicing and then I took him back to work. So when I hopped back on the highway, there was two accidents on the freeway. So there was a dump truck that had gone flat and it was in the left-hand lane and then there was an accident and it was in the right-hand lane. So all the cars had to like zigzag through this like, you know, couple hundred meters. So then... I didn't take the highway to go back out there after school when I did finally get the children. I didn't take the highway to go back because they were saying the highway was like an hour to two hours um, to get through that stretch alone and we're a good, you know, 20 minutes from that stretch. So it would have been like a three hour drive. So we took the back roads and there were two more accidents on the back roads. So by the time we got to um, Mike's work, <laughs> my son... Yeah, he put down his window when, when Mike came out of work and he put down his window and he's like, Daddy, we're already up to five fire trucks, two ambulances and four police cars. Think we can see any more? And Mike was like, where have you guys been? Like, what did, did you saw all that stuff? It's just all the accidents. It was crazy. So that will not happen today, Touchwood. 
All right, I'm gonna say goodbye. You guys haven't asked any more questions. So I, um, I'm hoping everything went off without a, without a stitch this morning. It sounded like it was really positive. And I really look forward to seeing what you guys are gonna be spinning up and posting in the Ravelry group. Next episode, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that I will have my Tease Water singles woven up. Um, I'm just warping that up on my Cricut, on my little samplet. It's my little, um, this one. It's actually my mom's, but they're in Japan right now, so I'm using it. But it's uh, her 10 inch or 11 inch samplet loom from Ashford. I'm going to put the Tease Water Warp on there. And then I will finish my um, project that's on my loom right now. If you want to see that project, um, hop on Instagram. I've got some pictures of that that will be posted today. Oh, what's the weather? It is sunny but cold. It's 10 degrees Celsius and uh, it's beautiful, beautiful sunny weather today. So I'm looking forward to uh, catching up with the kids. Did you guys get snow on Friday or something? No, we didn't get snow. I know it snowed in Winnipeg because my uncle um, um, emailed photos of their, of their house and they've got at least an inch of snow in Winnipeg, but not here. No, not in Vancouver. Just rain just rain <laughs> april showers bring bring may flowers all right guys um have a wonderful day thank you for joining me on the stream i'm sorry i'm a little bit distracted today i'm feeling a little bit sort of all over the place it's just kind of one of those days getting back into the grind and um i hope that you're all doing really well um make sure to hop into the ravelry group uh when you start spinning your breeding color study to show us what you're doing and until next time happy spinning bye everyone mm -hmm.